Hi everybody, I'm Sarah, The Real Simple Mama, and my video today is going to be showing you how to start a medical kit for your backyard chickens and what you should have in it. Thank you for being here and watching this video. So this is going to help you start getting an idea of the types of tools that you should have in your medical kit for your backyard flock. Now, and I'm not gonna go into detail about all the different diseases your chickens can get and the symptoms and all the different injuries that your chickens can get. Those are all covered in other videos. But what I'm going to show you is over the past few years of having chickens, these are the types of materials that I keep reading about over and over as things that you should have on hand in case somebody in your flock gets sick or gets injured. And that way, whether you just have baby chicks or you don't even have chickens yet, you can start building this toolkit of items that you may need. So we're gonna talk about just basic first aid type materials that you need if you need to dress a wound as well as some medications that you might want to have on hand. So first of all, I would have a basic setup of just some basic tools and materials. And if you can, try to keep these items that are only for your chickens. So it's not like your kitchen towel that you also take out into the coop. This is stuff that is just for your flock. So firstly, you want some cotton towels. You can use paper towels, um, but cotton or microfiber would really be best because you're not gonna be having little pieces of the fabric come off. And this is one of the most amazing tools that I have. This is a headlamp. I use this all the time, going out and doing medical checks, doing chicken spa treatments for Bumblefoot. Um, if you wanna go out at night and see if they have any type of mites, lice, parasites, this is the thing. So this goes on your forehead. I'm not going to model it for you because my life is embarrassing enough as it is. But this thing is fantastic. You can adjust the angle of it and then you can adjust the brightness as well. So I definitely recommend a headlamp. For me, when it comes to gardening or chickens, if at all possible, I don't like to have anything on my hands. I feel like I have a more in tune experience with my chicken if I can just hold them and feel them. So the gloves is totally up to you. The next thing we're gonna talk about is having some stuff to help just sterilize the area. And I would also say if you haven't had to deal with a chicken who is injured or ill, you kinda need to have a plan on, are you gonna treat them out in the yard? Do you have like a workbench or a table or a chair out there where you could soak their feet or apply bandages or administer medication? Do you bring them into your house? For us, I do most of this stuff outside, but I wanted to show you a couple of other things to have on hand just in case you have to bring a chicken into your bathtub, for example, they get attacked, they've got some exposed flesh or they're bleeding or something like that. So you can certainly use bleach to disinfect an area. You wanna think about if you're having to bring your chicken in and they've got an open wound, that's different than if you're just putting deworming medication like on their back. If they've got an open wound or something like that, you need to be sterilizing the area so we don't get an infection in that wound. And so you can either use a bleach mixture and of course look at how to mix that bleach and dilute it with water. Or I heard about chlorhexidine, which is another type of solution. This is not something that goes on your chicken. This is not for cleaning the wound. This is for sterilizing the area uh, before and after if you have to bring a chicken into your kitchen sink or into your bathtub or something like that. So this is chlorhexidine solution. And again, it's a disinfectant. Okay. So I also have scissors, of course. And... In case you guys hadn't seen my videos about how to cut chicken's nails or if you may need to do that, it's not something that you normally need to do, but these are two types of dog nail clippers. This one is the one that I talk about that's the guillotine style, you can see why. And then this one is a regular clipper, but it has a guard on the back so you can't stick a nail through too far and then cut the quick or the vein that's in it. But if you don't have dogs or you haven't had a need for these, a lot of times if you need to cut a chicken's nails, their nails are actually too thick for you to use like a regular human nail clipper. So you might wanna get one of those as well. When it comes to medications, I do have videos about worming your chickens and about mites and lice, and you can check those videos up here. I will just show you real quick that you might want to have one solution for worms and one solution for respiratory illness but there's a couple of weird little quirks about these medications. For respiratory illness, for example, I have Denigard and I split this with a friend when she gave me the three new chickens that I've added to my flock. 
a lot of times if you have a really small flock, like my max is eight hens, it doesn't really necessarily make sense for me to go buying a ton of medication. Certainly if you have the money, you can, but you might wanna look in your chicken community and say, hey, uh, can we maybe split this big bottle of medication? So for respiratory illness, and I'm not gonna show it to you because I don't have the original bottle, but we've used Denigard, and Denigard is a medication that treats respiratory illness in chickens. What's great about it is that you add it into water. It, you add it into your chicken's water and they drink it. And the other thing that's great about it is that there is a dosage to be sort of a preventative, and then there's another dosage if you actually have a confirmed case and you need to actually treat the flock like, yes, they do have something going on. So, and of course the medicating piece and all of this is my personal opinion, what I've done over three and a half years of research and experience and asking questions and talking to people, but certainly this is not the chicken Bible. So you don't have to do things my way, but my recommendation is you can either just treat when you have a confirmed case, like I've had to use this warming medication twice this year, or if you're going to do it preventatively, I would only do it once every six months. So Denigard is what I use for the respiratory illnesses. This is Ivermax, which is a type of Ivermectin. And the weird thing about Ivermectin is that it's not really technically, officially marketed for chickens. It's for livestock, for larger animals like cows, sheep, and goats. So when you're looking at the way this is done for example this is the pour on side for you to be pouring like half an ounce onto your cattle well for chickens obviously you're not going to do that this version is called the pour on and it is absorbed through their skin so you do have to watch on forums or ask questions in your local chicken groups about okay well how do i change the dosage and then of course with this medication with stuff for worms you usually want to make sure that you're going to do the initial dose and then mark your calendar because between one and two weeks later, you have to do it again. That way, just the same as treating for fleas or any other thing that you might have done for your indoor pets, that way you hit all of the parasites on all of the different phases of the life cycle. So for medications, I have Ivermax for worms and I have Denigard for respiratory illness. Okay, we have illness taken care of. Now let's talk more about injury. An injury could be anything from you've added new hens and they've gotten pecked, you've, you're dealing with bumblefoot, which as you know is the bane of my existence, which is a staph infection that a chicken gets on her foot. You could be dealing with all different types of issues. There's a couple of different things that I recommend. First of all, either the bleach or the chlorhexidine so that you can sterilize the area just in case they have an open wound. Again, there's no point in you bringing them into your house and spending all of this energy and effort trying to clean the wound and treat it if you're putting them in a dirty sink. So just be really careful. And then of course, after you get the chicken out of your sink or your bathtub, you're gonna clean it again. But when we're dealing with an injury, you wanna think about keeping the area clean so it can't get germs in it. And then if you have to wrap the wound you have the extra fun step of these are barnyard animals. <laughs> How am I gonna keep them from taking the bandage off? But don't worry, I have figured all of this out and I've actually gotten pretty good at it. So this is the process that I do. And I'll show you all the products that I use. Oh, by the way, nobody gives me any of this stuff for free. Nobody pays me to advertise their product. So this is the stuff that I truly have that I think works. So if we're talking about a bumblefoot infection, for example, which is what I've been dealing with again, um, I have a special, it's not this Tupperware container, but it's the same type of concept that's only used for chicken stuff. It's been sterilized and cleaned. I put warm water in it with Epsom salt. I actually don't measure out the Epsom salt because it's really just to help soften up the scab or to help make the flesh a little bit more supple if you have to dig in there or take a scab off. So warm water with Epsom salt and I will soak the chicken's feet in there, which is why I have my chicken towels. Then when we're cleaning a wound, this is what I recommend you do. And again, these are not the only products that work. There are plenty of products that I could go and list just to confuse you even more that I don't have yet because I haven't needed them, but this is what I do in this order. So to help actually sterilize the wound, right? Not bleach solution, but what you can actually put on your bird. I use Vetericin. And this is sort of like the chicken version of hydrogen peroxide. It's gonna help clean the wound before you put the medication on it and you wrap it up. And Vetericin, they have different versions of it. There's a dog version and there's a farmyard animal version and then there's the chicken version. So I use this. I just got a new bottle because my old one had expired and we don't wanna mess around with that. But you just keep it. I'm just making sure I don't have anything crazy I have to tell you. 
So this is something that you're just going to spray on and you just let it air dry. Or of course you keep the chicken still for as long as possible. So this is step one after their wound has been cleaned with water, you get as much dirt, feathers, junk out of it as you possibly can. This is next. Okay. So we've gotten feathers, dirt, junk out of the wound. We've sprayed it. So theoretically, as long as our hands are clean, the chicken's in a clean environment, this has been sprayed on. As long as we've still got the bird with us, everything is pretty much as clean and sterile as it's gonna get. The next thing that I would add is Neosporin. You can use off-brand, but what you have to make sure that it doesn't have, it cannot have the pain relief, the numbing agent in it that is very dangerous for chickens. So just plain Neosporin. And you can put it on as liberally as you want. Again, make sure that your hands are clean or your gloves are clean and you can put that on the chicken's wound. So Neosporin without pain. And again, don't let this be like the family Neosporin. Let it just be the chicken <laughs> Neosporin. After that, then we're gonna do gauze and a vet wrap or an athletic bandage that I'll show you in a second. But I wanted to show you this new product that I've just been using for a few weeks. If you've got Bumblefoot, which is a different situation because it's your chickens have gotten a cut and then it starts to get an infection inside it. It can end up in their bloodstream and it can end up killing them if you don't treat it. With Bumblefoot, you are trying to draw out the infection, right? We don't want it going up into their body. We want to try to pull it out. So we're trying to get the scab and the kernel of the hard pussy junk where the infection got in. We're trying to pull it back out. So while what I just showed you would be perfectly fine, what I've been doing for my girls with Bumblefoot, and they're almost healed, yay, is I do the sterilizing the area with the bleach or the chlorhexidine or whatever. I soak their feet, I use Vetericin, and then instead of the Neosporin, what I'm putting on them that's gonna stay on when I bandage the foot up is it's this stuff called Prid. And what it's going to do is it's going to help draw everything to the surface of the skin. So if you've got, um, in, the, in the sense of bumblefoot, you kind of know that it's healed, just like for us, when the scab comes off and it's healthy tissue underneath, that's when you know you're good to go, that infection is gone, they're out of danger. So what I do, and you can see, it's like just a really thick, it's a lot thicker than Vaseline, is I get a nice good blob of that with my clean finger, and I put that all over the scab, and then we're gonna wrap it up. And after using that for a while, it's gonna help the scab to soften. Now, we don't wanna rip off a scab if they're not done healing underneath. But what this will do is help draw all of that stuff and bring it out instead of allowing it to go deeper in. Does that make sense? The other two things that I'll show you is we have non-stick pads or non-stick gauze. It comes as a big rectangle. And before I'm out there with an injured chicken, I've cut it up into small squares. You can see the rest of my small squares are in there. So the chicken's gotten the Epsom bath soak on their injury, or you've cleaned it with water the best you can, you've patted it dry, you're trying to get, again, anything that you see that's dirt, feathers, feces, get in, all of that stuff off of there. Vetericin, spray it liberally, just let it air dry for as much as you can before you go on to the next step. Then depending on what you're dealing with, if it's just an injury, you can use, like I said, Neosporin with, Neosporin with no pain relief in it, or you can use, there's blue coat that's spelled with a K, K-O-T-E, or there's other things that you can put on that help the wound to start closing up and healing and keeping it germ-free. Or like I said, you could use the Prid. And then what you're gonna do while that material is on there, it's the Neosporin or it's the blue coat or it's Prid, it's the gummy thick gel stuff. You're gonna stick a gauze square on whatever it is on your chicken. And then you're going to use, and you can use um, either just regular for humans, athletic bandage, the self-adhesive, the sticky stuff. They put it on you after you do a blood donation or after you've done a blood draw. Or you can buy the specific crazy colored ones in different thicknesses that are called Vet Wrap. This one is just a regular athletic bandage. I like using crazy colors because I can look out at a glance and see if Carmen Hendiego has taken her bandage off or not. But then what you'll do is you'll have a strip and I like the one that's thinner. I had a people bandage that was probably an inch and a half or two inches big and it was way too hard for me to wrap up my chicken. So I do like this one is only an inch across and I like that better. I cut a strip and what you're going to do is wrap your chicken's wound the best that you can, putting it firmly on and sticking the bandage to itself, kind of crunching as you go because it will not come off. 
but also keeping in mind that, you know, your chicken kind of needs to still have blood circulation. So you can't do it as tight as possible. My challenge when wrapping up Bumblefoot on their feet is you've got to keep all the toes out and facing the right direction. You can't let them walk around for a day with their foot all bent up. So nice and firmly, and you're putting the bandage on itself, and then you're good to go. Lots of information, but a final, final quick review. So you've got your worm medication, you've got a respiratory medication, and remember, you need to plan on treating the whole flock if somebody gets something. Read about egg withdrawal, and read about if you have to administer it again. We've got the nail clippers, scissors, towels, gloves, and a headlamp. And then we've got to sterilize the surface. You can have chlorhexidine or you can have bleach. To sterilize the wound, you want something like vetericin or blue coat. Afterwards to what's gonna stick on and be like a gel that's helping the wound to heal. If we're dealing with wounds, you've got neosporin with no pain additive, or you've got prid, which will help draw an infection out in something like bumblefoot. Then you're going to cut or fold your non-stick gauze pad on for your chickens. I'm holding everything upside down, aren't I? And then finally, you're going to cut and fit an athletic bandage, any of the self-adhesive bandages or the vet wrap. And again, I like the bright colors because it's easy to see if somebody's snuck out of their bandage or not. Finally, 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 this is not the absolute ultimate guide of every single thing you would ever need for all of your chickens for the rest of your life. These are the things that in the three years of me having a small backyard flock, these are the things that I've had to use at least once. So probably in 2021, I will do another video with the things that I have added to my medical kit for my chickens. And then by the end of 2020, you can also find all of these items listed with photos and more details on realsimplemama.com. Okay, I hope that's been helpful. As always, you're welcome to drop helpful comments or questions or suggestions. What's in your chicken medical kit? Drop them down below and we will all be helping each other out. Thanks so much for watching.